From weekend flings to secret children, the so-called Playboy Prince has certainly been around. So who are the women he left behind? Prince Albert may be a Monegasque royal, but that doesn't mean that he only dated women from Monte Carlo. In the late 1970s, Albert headed off to the United States, where he studied political science at the prestigious Amherst College. During this time, it is believed that Albert began going out with more American women. Decades later, when the Amherst Student University newspaper asked Albert about his favorite classes at Amherst, the prince joked, Wow, maybe human sexuality? No, 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 I don't know. I can't say I had one favorite one. In November 1981, just months after the prince graduated from Amherst, the Weekly World News spotted him snuggling with American singer Michelle Freeman in an unnamed European nightclub. As reported by the outlet, Michelle was 10 years older than the prince at the time. Unfortunately, this age gap was said to have shocked Albert's mother, the US-born Princess Grace Kelly of Monaco. In the past, Grace had already opposed the prince's dalliances with another older American woman, Kathy Lee Crosby. The Weekly World News claims that Albert's mother had heaved a sigh of relief when that previous relationship had ended. She was likely happy then when Albert and Michelle's fling proved to be equally short-lived. Back in his single days, Albert was known for having a relatively high turnover rate when it came to dating. Unfortunately, this was said to be a major turnoff for some of his girlfriends. The French actor Catherine Ulrich was perhaps one of Albert's chief critics in this regard. When she dated the prince, she found that he had something of a wandering eye, which isn't exactly the best characteristic for a long-term lover. According to royal expert Jeffrey Robinson, Catherine would not stand for Albert's infidelity and finally ended the relationship because of his dalliances. When the prince tried to make amends, Catherine refused. Robinson writes in his book, Grace of Monaco, The True Story, that the actor returned Albert's apology flowers with a note that read, Love without faithfulness is like a flower without sun. Albert, meanwhile, found that it was almost impossible for him to stop meeting new women. As Robinson explained, the prince was quite unabashed in his approach for dating. According to the biographer, Albert would openly admit, at discos or restaurants or at parties or on the beach or even on the street, I say hello to girls. Why not? I like that sort of thing. While Prince Albert didn't tend to stick with any one woman for long, he dated some people for longer than others. Apparently, American reality TV star Sonia Morgan captured the prince's heart more than the rest. From what Sonia has shared on The Real Housewives of New York City, her fling with Albert blossomed into a full-blown romance. And this was not the only time that Sonia spoke publicly about her royal romance. Chatting with Bravo after hours, the real housewife opened up more about the relationship and even hinted that Albert had taught her a thing or two about decorum. The Regency, I mean, I used to go there with Prince Albert. You, you behave yourself there. You are in a fishbowl. Sonia Morgan wasn't the only woman who Prince Albert taught about royal life. Donna Rice was also said to have dated Albert for some time. And according to some sources, Donna enjoyed the glitz and glam of the upper crust experience. At the time, Donna was a successful model who could often be found mingling with rock stars and athletes. One of her former university classmates hinted that she enjoyed dating high-profile men. They said, Donna always knew what she was going after. She always knew what she wanted and was going to get it some way. While this statement might seem a little bit exaggerated, it is true that Donna was linked to a number of big name figures, including Albert. That being said, Donna and Albert never got especially serious, as Grace Kelly was believed to be against the match. Albert, too, might have had his own reservations, as he was said to be particularly suspicious of women who dated other famous men. In his book, Jeffrey Robinson quoted the prince as saying, I always have to ask myself, is she with me because of me or because of who I am? When I meet women, it's okay. She seems nice, but what is she really here for? Over the years, Prince Albert has proven himself to be quite the sportsman. Not only did he become an avid skier during his youth, but he also dabbled in swimming, soccer, rowing, and even a bit of ultimate frisbee. He represented Monaco in the Olympics on five separate occasions as a bobsledder, although he never placed. But I never thought that I'd uh, be able to... to uh take up a new sport and, and be able to go that far with it. And he also played his fair share of tennis. Back in 1979, Albert signed up for Monaco's celebrity tennis tournament, where he and Brooke Shields sparked dating rumors. The pair were photographed gazing lovingly into each other's eyes and even sharing coy smiles. While the two seemed to enjoy each other's company, however, they never really got serious, much to the chagrin of the press. In fact, some royal fans were so invested in Albert and Brooke's relationship that, in 1982, the Italian version of Grand Hotel magazine announced on its cover, The Son of Grace Marries Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields was not the only model that caught Prince Albert's eye. 
During the early 1990s, the prince was also linked to German supermodel Claudia Schiffer. The two apparently met at the World Music Awards and proceeded to date for about a year. While the couple certainly stayed together for longer than Albert and his other paramours, they didn't seem to take their relationship too seriously. When rumours of an engagement swirled, Claudia told the world not to get their hopes up. Speaking to Vanity Fair in 1993, the model explained, I prefer not to talk about that. But one thing I can tell you is that I'm not getting married right now. I'm only 22. I do know Albert very well. I live in Monte Carlo, so it's only normal." The prince later echoed Claudia's more casual approach to their romance, telling the Evening Standard, "...I took her out on a couple of dates, but that was it." Unfortunately, Albert's blasé approach to the relationship might have fueled the rumours that he would never settle down, and this angered much of the public. As historian Robert Lacey once told Good Morning America, "...too many girlfriends, pretty blondes, and I think the people feel the sooner he settles on one of them, the better that will be." In some ways, the Monegasque public had the right to worry about Prince Albert's romantic antics. Prior to 2002, the Constitution of Monaco detailed that if a prince failed to produce an heir, the principality would become French territory. Oh, sacre bleu. This meant that Albert's inability to settle down essentially put the whole state of Monaco at risk of extinction. What's more, just a few generations before, the principality had fallen into a state of crisis when Prince Louis II's marriage proved childless. The prince saved the crown by giving the throne to his illegitimate grandson, Prince Rainier III, Albert's father. Thanks to Albert's playboy ways, the Monegasque crown's history of having royal love children repeated itself. In fact, Albert's oldest known daughter, Jasmine Grace Grimaldi, was born out of wedlock to a California-based realtor by the name of Tamara Rotolo. Albert first crossed paths with Tamara in 1991. At the time, the American woman was coming fresh out of a failed marriage. Soon after, Tamara returned to the United States, only to discover that she was pregnant. Albert insisted that he was not the baby's father and ignored Tamara's request for a paternity test. In 2006, however, the prince had a change of heart and officially recognised his daughter. Jasmine Grace Grimaldi wasn't the only one of Prince Albert's love children. In fact, the so-called Playboy Prince had at least one other baby out of wedlock, a boy named Alexandra Grimaldi Cost. Unlike Jasmine Grace, who was the result of a short affair, Alexandra was the fruit of a six-year relationship between Albert and the elegant, toga-born Air France flight attendant Nicole Cost. It is believed that Nicole and Albert first met on board an Air France flight between Nice and Paris. Nicole told the Daily Mail, "...I always served in first class, so I was accustomed to dealing with VIPs. When I saw Albert, our eyes met and I knew this was different. There was definitely an aura around him and we hit it off immediately." As time went on, however, Nicole and Albert fell out of love. Thus, when their son, Alexandra, was born in 2003, the prince waited over a year to claim paternity of the child. Nicole told the Daily Mail that, in the end, Albert and Alexandra got on well, sharing a natural father-son relationship. When you're a parent, uh, you, you have a heightened sense of responsibility toward these, toward these children. Prince Albert and Nicole Cost may have gone out for six years, but very few of the prince's relationships lasted so long. On the contrary, it is believed that very few of his flings went beyond more than a few dates. This was certainly the case for the American actor Bo Derrick, who revealed that she and Albert went out just once. Speaking on Larry King in 2000, Bo recalled the experience as a positive one. In the end, though, Bo viewed the date as a fun and novel fling, rather than the start of something real. Here I am, a little girl from Southern California going out with the prince. As the years have gone by, fans of the Monegasque royal family have buzzed with rumours that Prince Albert had other secret love children. Naturally, very few of these allegations have gone very far. As Albert's friend Stefan Byrne told Town & Country, "...one day Albert told me, oh, if I listened to all the claims, I would have more children than anybody else in the world." That being said, some paternity claims have certainly garnered more attention than others. In 2021, The Telegraph reported that a woman by the name of Marisa S. went so far as to sue Albert for paternity eternity in the Italian court system. Marisa, who is originally from Brazil, has said that she met Albert in a Rio de Janeiro nightclub in September 2004. From that initial encounter, Albert was said to have swept Marisa off her feet, taking her on a wild, jet-setting adventure. Court documents claim that Albert took Marisa first to Milan, then to Monte Carlo, and eventually to Russia before sending her back home to Brazil on a KLM flight. Soon after returning to Rio de Janeiro, Marisa allegedly discovered she was pregnant. According to her claims, Albert stopped responding to her messages as soon as she told him the news. Nine months later, she gave birth to a daughter named Celia. Albert firmly denies these claims. 
In 2011, Prince Albert finally settled down and married former Olympic swimmer Charlene Whitstock in a full-day public ceremony. The couple's wedding was an over-the-top extravaganza that involved fireworks, a concert by the Eagles, and 110 pounds of strawberries atop a larger-than-life wedding cake. Albert declared his love to his bride, stating, if perhaps a bit awkwardly, Charlene, thank you for putting up with my very busy schedule, with my absences sometimes, with my inconsistencies and idiosyncrasies. You are a wonderful, sometimes patient woman with me. In the end, though, royal life was not easy for Princess Charlene, who struggled with everything from dressing like a royal to living in a palace. As royal expert Baron Henri Estremon told Insider, the newly minted princess had to change quite a lot to fit into her new role. Apparently, she felt isolated at the same time. The royal expert noted that, unlike previous royal brides, Charlene did not move to Monaco with friends and companions. On top of that, Estremon believes that Charlene had to recognize that Albert's flirtations would not stop just because he had become a married man. Estremon explained that despite her hopes that Albert might change, these expectations were far from realistic. 